All right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Summer Full Four. So today, guys, I want to talk to you guys about um, my Champions League round of 16 predictions. Now, before I give my predictions, I do want to let you guys know in some things. First of all, there will be two live streams. I'll have two live streams set on each Friday. So the next Friday, that is going to be on February 16th. No, sorry, um, February 10th. Yeah, February 10th, my bad. We will preview the 14th and 15th games. And then February 17th, we'll be previewing uh, the 21st and the 22nd games, okay? So we'll be previewing the four games. So there will be Champions League live streams, and it will be set at 3 p.m. Eastern time, okay, guys? So make sure you guys turn notifications on to get notified, okay? Number two is that this is just my predictions. This is not, this isn't what I want to happen. This is what I believe will happen. So make that, keep in mind when you're commenting down below that I am going to respect every team. You know, I want to give every team the, um, the benefit of the doubt, okay? It's just that I believe some of these game teams are just not well suited against other teams, okay? So just want to let you guys know with everything. Anyways, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first game which we have here, guys. It is, of course, you guys know the big one. It, it, it's this one, man. PSG versus Bayern Munich. Now, this is a huge game. This is a huge game, guys. I think, for me, this is a game that can mean a lot. And coming into this game... There's a lot of injuries for both teams. Um, as of the time of recording this video, um, this is February uh, 2nd, 2023. Um, Kylian Mbappe is set to miss the first leg and uh, potentially could even miss the second leg. Even Namor is out injured as well, I believe. Now, he should, I think he should be fine to recover in time for the Bayern game, but as of the time of recording, I have no idea. As for Bayern Munich, Sadio Mane is out uh, for a long period of time. I don't know if he's going to be back for the Champions League. Obviously, um, Neuer's out as well. There's also that as well. Um, obviously, Masrori is also out as well. And it's a lot of injuries to crucial players. And I think the key thing for this game is how will Bayern um, suit themselves? Because the thing is, like, Bayern this season haven't really been as free-flowing as they have been in the Bundesliga. They've been kind of struggling, especially, um, especially the January period where they got three draws from three games. And that's very, very underwhelming. And PSG, on the other hand, Despite the strong start they had in the League One um, at the end of the season and before the World Cup, they haven't really followed it up very well since then. You know, having to getting a last minute winner against Reims, and then obviously they, of course, um, then obviously they, of course, lost to Lens, and I think they even had a draw in there as well. Like PSG just haven't been playing well as a unit defensively, looking really, really suspect as well. Marquinhos, we know, at big games, he's been a liability in big games, and I just feel like for me, what's going to come down for me in this game is. Which um, attack is going to thrive? I think that's the difference for this game because I would say both defenses are on the same level. And I think the midfield is about the same level and it just comes down to attack. And I just feel as though despite Bayern um, struggling at the moment with their attack, um, especially in the league, I do give Bayern the slight edge just because of the fact that I believe PSG is just super reliant on Mbappe. And I think they need Mbappe to do at his 100% best. And we don't even have any guarantees that Namor is going to be playing. You know, nowadays Namor is very on and off, you know. We Who knows about his fitness? And um, I just don't trust Messi. I, I really don't think Messi is really going to give it us all for PSG. I really just think he's going to see what happens, you know, just for vibe's sake. And yeah, I just have Bayern winning this, guys. I think Bayern is too strong for PSG. And I have Bayern to win this game. Next up we have it is Milan versus Spurs. Now this <laughs> is a very interesting one, guys. A very, very interesting one, guys. I... I, I, I don't know what to say for this one. Because for me, the time of the recording, this when we saw the draw first made, we were thinking to ourselves, what a game this could have been. And now all of a sudden, we're now looking into this game and like, um, which team is worse? <laughs> like both teams have been very mid, to be honest with you guys. Like um, AC Milan this season have been really, really struggling a lot with injuries. Obviously, um, Magnon's been out. Zlatan's been out. Um, he's, um, he's actually not going to be playing the Champions League. Like I saw earlier today, they actually confirmed that he and Sergio Des will not even be in the Milan squad. And obviously, tomorrow has been a disastrous at, at the center back position. You know, obviously, um, even Giroud's not really been firing. Liel has been kind of struggling this season. And Milan just have so many issues at the moment. Defensively, they're looking uh, shambolic. Now, the same could be said with Spurs. That Spurs have also not been great. They've been terrible in games. They have lost a lot of home games, which is something that's very odd. Usually, Tottenham are really good at home. Son has been terrible this season. Kane's been decent. And just the whole back line in general has been really, really bad. 
I will say this, though. I do think that Pedro Porro signing will definitely help their defense in that regard, and I think it will strengthen the defense. Whether it will be enough, who knows, you know, okay? And I just feel as though that this is a very tricky one. I think this is going to come down to thin wires. And I give Spurs a slight edge in this ruling is that because even though Conte is a fraud in Europe, and I still think he is, I do believe that Pedro Porro signing at the right back position can really strengthen Spurs' thing. And I just have a feeling that Spurs, what they're going to do is that they're not going to be, what's going to probably happen is Milan will probably be the better team of both games, but Spurs will just find a way to Spurs their way through. Like, you know what I mean? Basically, like, one nil this thing out. And I wouldn't be surprised Spurs do it because as bad as Spurs are, they usually come alive in the second half. So I could see, like, maybe the first leg being at the San Siro, you know, maybe, you know, nil-nil, and then the second half, all of a sudden, Spurs you know, score two or three goals and pretty much end the tie. You know, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised that happens because that's the type of team Spurs are. They're very much a second half team, whereas Milan, they're kind of all, they're, they're not really, they're just been all over the place, defensively speaking. And I know it's the Champions League and I know anything can happen in the Champions League and I get that, but I do believe Spurs playing the second leg at home is a huge, huge advantage for them because the thing is, Milan isn't really that great on the road. And I think the crucial thing for Milan is they have to win that first leg. If they win the first leg, they put themselves in a great position. But I just have a feeling that Spurs is just going to do this. I am going to go with Tottenham Hotspur to advance to the quarterfinals of the UEFA Champions League. Next up, we have it is Club Bruges versus Benfica. Ah, oh, Club Bruges. I genuinely feel bad for Club Bruges here. And I under, I respect uh, Club Brugge, John Gronk. I like some of the players. Like Amingule has been good. Obviously, uh, Jukla has been amazing for them. And I just fear for Club Brugge, though, because as good as they were in the Champions League, I ha- I like we have to like criticize you know Club uh, Leverkusen and Atletico Madrid a lot because they the two teams should have done so much better, especially Atletico Madrid. I'm more critical with them. Obviously, Leverkusen, I'm still critical with them as well. But at Lever- Atleti, I hold most of the blame. But putting that to the side, They've been they have they haven't been great this season lately. They've been struggling in the league so far, which is probably the reason why they even sacked their old coach and they brought in Scott Parker, who I just don't really know how on the earth he's gonna save Club Roots here. Whereas Benfica, on the other hand, have been playing amazing football. Schmidt has done a great job with this team. This team is playing beautiful football, you know. And even though they did let go Enzo Fernandez go to Chelsea, which is a big blow for them, they still have some quality players. You still have the likes of Gonzalo Ramos, you still have the likes of uh Vlachodimos. Verissimo, you still have Antonio Silva, who's been amazing. You still have Rafa Silva. You still have a lot of quality players in this Benfica team. And guys, there's just no other way to put it, but Benfica's easily win this. I think this could be, I, I just see Benfica winning this. Um, I could, I don't think it will be as convincing as people may seem like, sound like to be. Like, I don't think Club Bruges will get destroyed per se, but it's just really hard to back Club Bruges. It's just really hard to back Club Bruges. And I just think Benfica is going to, just do this. So I, I think Benfica could potentially even win both games. Um, or if not, they will probably just draw one and win the game at home. So yeah, I mean we'll see what happens. So I hope um it will be very crazy if Club Rouge can do this. And yeah, man, Benfica man. Back to back Champions League quarterfinals. We'll have to wait and see, man. Next away of it is Dortmund versus Chelsea. This is a massive game. This is a massive game. And there's a lot of riding on this game, too, because a lot of former players are playing against their parent club. Obviously, um, Aubameyang is playing against um, Dortmund, his former club. Obviously, Pulisic as well. And it's really, really interesting in that regard because I do believe that this is great. This is going to be an interesting matchup because Dortmund this season have been great attacking-wise. They've been amazing. You know, I'm liking the likes of, you know, Adem- Adiemi has been scoring goals. And Dortmund have had a slow start to the season, but I think, think, I think they've started to improve. Second half of the season, I think they started to improve with the Bundesliga returning. They have seemingly turned a notch around. But the question remains with Dortmund, man, is that that defense, man. The defense of Dortmund is so sketchy. It is so breachable. And I just worry about how many goals Chelsea can put past Dortmund. But the thing is, even with Chelsea, all that being said, they still also have limitations as well. Because their attack, as good as it is on paper, they have a lot of um, player registration issues. Because I believe at the time of recording, they can only register three of those players, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below, but I believe they can only register three of their new signings, which could be a big blow for Chelsea. So they have to choose very carefully who is going to be registered, who's not going to be registered. And I just feel like for Chelsea, man, um, th- they have everything to takes to win it. You know, Graham Potter, 
you know, maybe could do the unlikely thing and, you know, help Chelsea win the Champions League because, of course, that's pretty well, guys, top four. It's pretty much done for them this season. And right now, they have to go all in for the Champions League. And so it's going to be interesting to see how Dortmund approach this one, but I expect Dortmund to win. I mean, you have the likes of, you know, uh, Enzo Fernandez now on your team. You, st you still have the likes of Aubameyang. You have the likes of Modric, Nukula Bali, Thiago Silva. Like, there's a lot of quality players in this Chelsea team. And Chelsea, let's be real, should be able to beat Dortmund. You would expect, right? Next up, <laughs> it's game number five. It is Real Madrid versus Liverpool. Oh, my God. Guys, I don't even want to preview this game. I really don't want to. But, obviously, we are going to for formality's sake. But let's be really real, guys. Liverpool is getting... Liverpool could potentially get destroyed. And the thing is, Real Madrid have... The thing is, Real Madrid themselves haven't been playing that great, if we're being honest here. But Liverpool have just been so bad this season. So bad this season. Defensively, they're looking shambolic. They have so many injuries. Right now. I think Van Dijk is injured. Canate is injured. And I just saw Joe Gomez had a disaster class against Brighton. The less said, the better, right? Trent Alexander will defensively been liable. Although, I do think the second half of the season, he has somewhat improved defensively, but still a very liable... Um, as well. And then obviously the midfield, man. Henderson, man. I'm sorry. Henderson is finished. Henderson is finished, guys. Like, that guy is horrendous. Fabinho has also been terrible this season. I used to rate Fabinho highly. Now I can't rate him highly anymore. And the Liverpool attack just looks out of ideas. Like, I'm sorry. Like, Salah has been kind of ghosting. Um, he's not really been that great. Gakpo has been underwhelming. Dar Nunez, he's been okay. Firmino has been on and off. This Liverpool team just have so many issues at the moment. And Jurgen Klopp just doesn't know how to get this team to gel. And the thing is with Real Madrid is that this season has been very underwhelming to say the least. They're five points behind in the La Liga Torre race. It's looking really, really tough to defend their title. They're obviously lost the Spanish um, Super Cup to Barcelona, their rivals. And now the Copa del Rey draw with uh, Barcelona, of course. And then they house off the Club World Cup. And I don't know if you guys saw the fixture list. The fixture list in February is insane. They're going to have to play... Um, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, and Liverpool in the span of two weeks. That is insane towards the tail end of February. That is insane fixture list. And I don't know how Real Madrid is going to help up with everything because I saw several injuries right now. Militao just got injured earlier today. And um, yeah, it's going to be interesting, guys, because Real Madrid are battling injuries as well. But that being said, guys, Real Madrid should beat Liverpool. Real Madrid owns Liverpool, guys. I don't think Liverpool have beaten Real Madrid since 2009. It's been a long time since Real Madrid, Liverpool have beaten Real Madrid. It's been a long, long time. And I don't think that's continuing. And I think Real Madrid will beat Liverpool, guys. Now, this is a game that I'm really excited for. This is one of my favorite games of the round of 16, guys. And the beauty, beauty with this game in particular is that it's an underdog matchup. And whatever the case may be, we're going to have either Eintracht Frankfurt or Napoli in the Champions League quarterfinals. Now, obviously, let's start with Napoli first. Napoli have been amazing this season. They've been firing all cylinders in Serie A. They have been amazing. You know, Kivici has been incredible. Um, he's been amazing. Cavardona, people like to call him like that. I'm just going to call him Kivici. Awesome, and it's been a re really amazing too. And then I look at other players like Anguiza has been under it. Elmas, Lobotka. You know, Kim Min Jae has been excellent. Even Merritt's been really good. You know, a player that I've recently is not really been that great. And Napoli fans can tell you this. that He's been very underwhelming in the last couple of seasons. But he's really risen up this season. And they've really played so well. Eintracht Frankfurt, on the other hand, is a really good cup team. And I think people need to respect Eintracht Frankfurt. Because while they may not be great in the league format, they're very good at cup competitions. And that's what the Champions League is all about. This isn't about, oh, being a consistent... You know, it's about moments. And that's what the Champions League is all about. It's about moments, guys. Moments reign supreme in this competition. And I still genuinely believe that Frankfurt is a very difficult team to play against in the Champions League. Okay? Because, like I said, guys, it's going to be very difficult for uh, for Napoli to do this. And this is a very close game. I think this one could go either way. I actually give Frankfurt... I actually think Frankfurt's going to prevail just because I feel like their players are more... I, I just feel like their players are just really motivated to go on this Champions League deep adventure. Whereas Napoli, of course, they'll be motivated. I'm not saying they won't be. I just feel as though at Napoli, I just feel as though they're just going to be let down. I just feel like Napoli will just kind of underperform. And I just have a feeling that Frankfurt's just going to do this, guys. I just have a feeling... And like I said, guys, there's usually one upset in the round of 16. And I just have a feeling it could be this one. I have a feeling it could be this one. And I haven't picked any crazy upsets so far. 
And I have a feeling it could be this one. And look out for Carlo Mirani, guys. That guy's been amazing for them. Kevin Trout has been a great goalkeeper. I also like Indica has been amazing. Then you also have the likes of So, who's been great. This Eintracht Frankfurt team is really underrated. And I'm actually going to go with Frankfurt to prevail in this one, guys. Believe it or not. All right, now it's time for the penultimate games. game, guys. It is RB Leipzig versus Manchester City. Now, for this game in particular, guys, I think the interesting thing about this game is that how will all um, Manchester City do? Because the thing about this Manchester City team is that they haven't been great. Uh, they haven't been that amazing this season. They ha really haven't been. Um, but they know how to get it done in the competitions, right? Whereas for RB Leipzig, on the other hand, they've been great this season. You know, Nkunku has been firing. Shobasai has been great. Um, and so on and so forth. My only concern with Leipzig, though, is that defensively, I think this team is very, very vulnerable. Defensively, I think they're very, very sketchy. And that's where I worry for Man City is that, and especially Erling Holland in particular, because we know he has a former, we know he likes to score against RB Leipzig. He did it, of course, in DFB Pokal a few years ago, I believe, and won his first trophy there, Dorman, his only trophy, I believe. And I just feel as though this Manchester City team, it just, it, it, I just think, for me, RB Leipzig, they can upset. I could see an upset happening in this one, but I think RB Leipzig, they have to win the first leg in Germany because if Man City gets a draw, or wins, then I think it's done. I think it's done. But if RB Leipzig can win the home game in Germany, we could have ourselves a great second leg. But I just think Manchester City is just way too powerful. Um, I think um, KDB and Erling Holland will just be enough. Although, we'll say this, though. I do think City's defense has not been as strong as it usually is um, in seasons past. So, I do think RB Leipzig can get at them. But I just think that City is just too powerful. I think City is too powerful. And when you have Erling Holland on your team, man, he's just going to score inevitably, right? So, yeah. And finally, the final game of the UEFA Champions League Round of 16. This is a game that I'm actually most excited for. And this is, in my opinion, the most closely matched, and I would say probably the most competitive of all the Round of 16 games. And probably the toughest one to call, guys, because both teams are so evenly matched, I feel. And um, it's really difficult to say for this one because... Inter Milan this season, they haven't been great this season. They have been very underwhelming this season. Right now, as things stand, I believe they're second in the Serie A, but they're nowhere near in the title race. Um, right now, they're even battling for top four. Top four is not even guaranteed for them, which is kind of sad because of what the quality they have. And I just feel like for Inter this season, they might go, they might just prioritize the Champions League and just try to see if they can go in a deep run because they haven't been to a quarterfinals of Champions League for some time now, I believe. Whereas FC Porto, on the other hand, we know the quality of players they have. Sergio Consasau has done a great job with this team. And there's a lot of underrated players in this team. I like that Uribe guy. He's been great. Evan nelson has been great. Diogo Costa. Then you got Pepe. And then obviously you got um, Tarambi. has been amazing. Then you got Estacchio. This Porto team have a lot of quality individual players, right? They have a lot of good players. And for Inter, on the other hand, they also have a lot of quality players too. Like Barella comes to mind. Skriniar, who this will be probably his last, this will be his last season at Inter Milan. He's going to join PSG in the summer. Then obviously Onana as well, and everything like that. And I think for me, what's going to come down to this game to determine which team advances, I think is whichever team is clinical. And I know this is a very obvious thing. I know many of you guys are going to say, "Well, duh, that's obvious," but I actually do mean it because I think both midfields and both defenses are relatively solid. And I just think it's going to come down to the attack. And my issue with Porto is that I feel like for me, as good as this team is. I feel like they miss too many chances. I feel like this team misses too many chances, and I feel like this team isn't as clinical as they should be. Whereas Inter Milan, they have those weapons up front. You have Lautaro Martinez, who criticized him all you will during the World Cup. He's been great so far uh, post-World Cup. Lukaku, I know, has not been great. But you still have like players like Jacko, Carrera, that could be super subs. And I feel like Inter super subs could actually be the difference for this one. Whereas FC Porto, on the other hand, I don't really feel like they have those bench players that can make that big difference compared to Inter. And I think that's what it could come down to, is that I think this could game be a very low-scoring one, and I think super subs could be the reason. So I actually have Inter to prevail on this one, but it's just very close. It's just very close. So to reiterate, to reiterate guys, these are my Champions League predictions. These are teams I have advancing. So as you guys can see, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and reiterate uh, um, we also I have Bayern Munich advancing, Spurs to advance, Benfica to advance, Chelsea to advance, Real Madrid to advance, Frankfurt to advance, Manchester City to advance, and Inter Milan. So I hope you guys did enjoy this pre video. This actually came out to be around 20 minutes, which 
wasn't what I intended for, but you know, it's okay. I think 20 minutes is a good amount of length for this one. So I hope you guys did enjoy. And remember guys to stay tuned to the channel for more videos. So make sure you guys like this video if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new out here. Comment down your thoughts in the comments section below. And remember guys, check out my other posts in the description below. And of course, consider becoming a member of the channel to get access to those members' videos. And of course, share the stream, share the video with your friends, guys, and share the channel as well. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.